what they want? You really want to know what they want? Something sacred as a film. It's been well said that the human mind always seeks to justify what the heart has chosen. As we approach our moment of truth, any number of excuses are thrown out to justify what our fallen hearts have embraced. In the arena of music and popular culture, there are three that are perhaps the most common. The good person, good intentions excuse, the neutral music excuse, and the it's only rock and roll excuse. So now let's look at each of them in turn. But I mean, it's just music. I mean, um, a lot of the artists I listen to are Christians themselves, I believe. They believe in God. They mention it in their albums. They mention it in their award shows. I mean, I'm sure, I, I'm sure they say something inappropriate here and there, and they act stupid at times. But, you know, we're just humans. We make mistakes. I mean, you know, Christians aren't perfect as well, you know. We're just forgiven. In a country where over 50 million people claim to be born-again Christians, this type of excuse is both common and horribly flawed. First, as we saw earlier in this series, saying it's just music is like saying it's just nuclear energy. For good or ill, music exerts an extraordinarily powerful influence. But equally cliched is the good person who believes in God defense. The truth is, professing belief in God by itself means nothing, as Jesus' brother James noted. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. He then got even more specific. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. The reason they tremble? because their end is hell, judgment, and chains of darkness. A destiny that only a few verses later is said to be shared by spiritually minded but self-willed humans, believers in God no doubt, who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. The fact is, Jesus reserved his greatest indignation for these types of religious hypocrites, people who draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If we stop and think about it, we can all understand God's disgust with this type of hypocrisy. Deep down inside, we know that there are few things more detestable than people who self-righteously say one thing and then do the exact opposite. For example, what would you think if you were watching the news and saw something like this. With KTLV5, I'm Ashton Bryce, live in front of Smokey's Barbecue Pit, where pets, or people for the ethical treatment of swine, is kicking off its national boycott of Smokey's, protesting the restaurant chain's killing of pigs. These dedicated protesters gathered outside Smokey's even before the restaurant's doors were open for business this morning. They say they mean business when it comes to defending pig rights. We are not superior animals. Pigs are like our brothers, just like dogs and everything else. You don't see pigs running around shooting or killing people because they're hungry or they're looking for money or anything. We have no right to feel that we are in any way superior. We are all one on Mother Earth. We're anticipating any minute now the arrival of the National Honorary Spokesman for Pets, Technopop superstar Priest. He will be making a statement that will officially kick off this campaign to stop what he is calling, quote, the systematic exploitation of our porcine brothers and sisters. Smokies, I knew I had to be here to see him because it's really hot and it's really fun. Priest, of course, was the big winner at last week's Grammys, taking home a total of seven awards. And now many are crediting the growing anti-pork movement to a dedication he made while accepting the award for Artist of the Year. And the Dalai Lama. I just want to dedicate this award to the approximately 42 million pigs that are killed every year for food. Now I just ask that we would all pray for the transmigration of their souls that they might reach a higher and a purer state. Thank you. If, it looks as if Priest is arriving right now. Uh, 
Uh, now, anybody here who has read Animal Farm or has seen Babe knows that pigs are smart. They have feelings. And we march them off to these crematoriums. These slaughterhouses that we call barbecue pits. Join with me today in boycotting Smokies so that we can assure that every pig everywhere is guaranteed the right to life, to liberty, and to the pursuit of happiness. How did you come to believe that pigs should be protected? Oh, um, well, that, that's pretty simple, really. It's um, because of my Buddhist faith, which of course includes belief in reincarnation, uh, uh, that provided the foundation. And when I heard that the, uh, the Dalai Lama was crying out for the souls of the millions of pigs that were killed over in, uh, in China and in Taiwan because of the, the hoof and mouth disease, I knew I had to do something about the killing here in America. So when I was... I'm sorry, Priest, but please correct me if I'm wrong, but are those pork ribs from Sonny's Barbecue? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, what if they are? I mean... Uh, the important thing today is that they're not from Smokies. What does it matter? What does it matter if they're from Smokies? If they're from Sunnies, it's still meat. It's still meat from a pig. <laughs> lady, come on! Are you some kind of vegan fundamentalist or something? I mean, no. But race here. The grace. You had just gotten out of this vehicle in front of all these people and had told them that we are supposed to stand up to protect the rights of pigs, and yet here. Are you judging me? No, I'm not. I'm not judging you. Of course you are. You're judging me. Look, you have no right to judge me. Remember, judge not, lest you be judged. Well, while we're on the subject, Priest, in light of this recent Pets campaign, how do you explain the lyrics to your latest song, Hogwild, uh, with the lyrics, This little pig went to market, this little piggy stayed home, and from the three other little piggies, I made bacon and ham bone. Look, Lois Lane, it's just a song. I mean, come on. If you don't like the lyrics, just, just get down with the beat. Look, I gotta go. Well, there you have it, folks. Apparently, who you say you are and what you do have virtually nothing to do with one another. In front of Smokey's Crematorium Smokehouse, I'm Ashton Bryce, KTLB5. Well, all this may fly in our postmodern relativistic world but it's gonna crash and burn big time on that great day when Jesus warned, even the words we've spoken will be entered as evidence before the judgment seat of God. And to my Lord and Savior Jesus, whom I love and I can't let go of. We wanna thank, first of all, God. Thank you so much. But, um, my God and- uh, I wanna st uh, start off by thanking God for blessing us so much. First and foremost, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And also that song, so thong. Thong, thong. Thank you. Not to be unkind or single anyone out, millions are equally guilty of taking God's name in vain. But one artist hit the nail on the head when he observed after one award ceremony, it was rather ironic that teenage girls with breast implants and rappers with violent and misogynistic lyrics spent the whole night thanking Jesus Christ of all people. It's clearly by unchristian means that these alleged friends of God have made their millions. There's another common misconception related to this excuse that we need to briefly touch on. While it's true, of course, that only God is perfect, and Christians are forgiven by virtue of the mercy made available through the cross, that in no way means that Christians are just forgiven. No, we're just forgiven if just is meant to suggest that that's the end of it. Reinforcing James' warning about dead faith, there are numerous places in the Bible where God commands us to be like Him, to see His righteous character develop progressively in our lives. Perhaps its greatest expression is found in Jesus' powerful exhortation during the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Impossible, the sight of death, no doubt. But that doesn't stop the true Christian from trying, like a player on a team versus the spectator in the stands. 
The child of God is compelled to work, sacrifice, and submit in order to both please and honor their Heavenly Father. Yes, he will fail, sometimes miserably, but there's a world of difference between someone who's on the field trying and the person in the stands living their own life, rebelling against God's righteous standards, and then giving the occasional shout out to the Lord. For them, Jesus' warning at the end of the Sermon on the Mount will echo for all eternity. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And that brings us to our next and somewhat related smokescreen. The good old neutral music excuse. I don't know. I don't like like the hard stuff more. I like more like yeah. in sync, Backstreet yeah. Boys. Oh, hey. dork. No, I mean seriously. No. I like like Backstreet Boys. They talk about love and relationships and yeah. things that are on the same wavelength as I am, and I can really relate to. It. And I really like how they. It helps everyone they, yeah. in different ways. Everyone can relate to it, so why not? Look at Britney Spears! Britney Spears, give it up one more time! Girl done went from the Mickey Mouse Club to the strip club! But before long, she was grinding down on a portable stripper pole. First of all, as we've seen, many of the artists who are commonly considered safe or neutral are far from it when held up to the light of God's Word. Nothing is forbidden from pushing immodesty, lust, fornication, religious hypocrisy, irresponsibility, idolatry, rebellion, occultism, false religion, on and on, their neutrality is an illusion that is only sustained when contrasted with the hardcore filth of today's entertainment industry. Take as just one example, Christina Aguilera, ex Mouseketeer. Sears Back to School cover girl and owner of one of the strongest voices in pop music. This genie in a bottle has been packaged as a sweet all-American pop star, the very definition of safe and wholesome. Countless moms have thought nothing of buying her music or a doll or a karaoke microphone. No doubt relieved their child isn't demanding the newest release by Eminem or Limp Bizkit. I'm a Christian, she told Rolling Stone, and I believe in God. All this is there for a purpose. He wants me to do what I'm doing for good. Well, one doesn't have to be very spiritual to know that God's good is being openly violated by her not-so-subtle anthems to seduction and fornication. Leaving aside the specific examples, and there are many, many more, there's a very interesting question we need to ask ourselves about the middle of the road. Isn't the so-called neutral stuff, by the very reason of its relative subtlety, potentially more destructive than the overt wickedness found in hardcore rock and roll? Surprised? Well, stop and consider the following fact of life. For something to be true, it has to be completely true. Inject into it even the smallest falsehood, and that truth immediately becomes a lie, a weapon in the hands of the one whom the scriptures call the father of all lies. And while there's no doubt that Satan's greatest triumph in this arena is to see people swallow lies devoid of even the slightest trace of virtue, cons like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, the fact is that his most effective deceptions are those that carry a degree of truth. 
And that's why the so-called middle of the road in music, as well as in many other areas of life, can often be the most dangerous place of all. By way of an analogy, consider rat poison, a substance that can kill a human just as easily as a rat. Well, it doesn't look very appetizing and it's very bitter to the taste. Left in a room with young children, it's unlikely they would pay much attention to it, and even more unlikely that they could stand to eat enough for it to be fatal. So it is with some of the more extreme forms of rock, music that directly glorifies death, sin, and Satan. Many people avoid its bitter sound and taste, although it must be noted that increasingly our society has become so sick and desensitized that many are willing to ingest this poison straight. But what if you were to take this exact same poison and sugarcoat it and add pretty colors to it to make it look, for example, like M&Ms and then leave it with the children? Well, virtually every one of them will eat the poison without hesitation. And the same death would result. So, if you were the devil, which method would you find the most reliable? The bitter poison or the sugar-coated candy? As the great philosopher and writer C.S. Lewis noted in his classic, The Screwtape Letters, indeed the safest road to hell is a gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. We can explore this safe road to hell in more detail here at your friendly neighborhood funeral home. To use another analogy, the biblical picture of man without God is much like this poor fellow right here, trapped in the coffin of his fallen nature and unable to do the least thing to help or redeem himself. While physically alive and brimming with potential from a human perspective to an infinite and incomprehensibly holy God, our sin, our innate drive to live life on our own terms has cut us off from God and His eternal life. To put it bluntly, we are spiritually dead and only a heartbeat away from eternal judgment. The only way out of this black hole is to be born again, to have our sins blotted out through the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross. Death metal, goth, punk, and other more extreme forms of rock for the most part openly reject the cross and instead glory in this fallen state. Perversion, nihilism, violence, death, hell, Satan, and all the other horrors associated with sin are openly rubbed in the listener's face. And incredibly, millions of people willingly subject themselves to this. But many others, in fact the majority, are put off by the in-your-face evil and instead opt for the safer stuff, the so-called neutral or pop music. Just believe you can fly, just believe you can touch the sky, it doesn't matter what you say or do, just as long as to your heart you're true, I believe but what does the pop musician really have to offer his listener? Cries of love, peace, follow your heart, and we are the world ultimately mean nothing to a spiritually dead man. In fact, by ignoring his real condition, or offering instead a false hope of salvation, this poor wretch's situation has only been made worse. Of course, 
There's nothing wrong with singing about love unless it's the conditional, selfish, and emotion-driven love popularized by today's entertainments. There's nothing wrong with singing about peace and caring for the world. These are all virtues taught and practiced by Jesus. There's nothing wrong with even singing about death and despair as long as it's done within the framework of truth and God's redemptive purposes. Apart from God, though, these things have no absolute context, no real meaning. Understand that God is reality. His Word is truth. And His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our resurrection from the coffin of sin and eternal judgment. Most hardcore music mocks this. Much of the pop world ignores it, which is ultimately worse. When you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong, and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. The Bible answers this question by condemning both. Avoid profane and vain babblings, we're told, for they will inevitably lead to greater ungodliness and their corrupting influence will spread like cancer. Profane signifies words and worldviews that are openly wicked or blasphemous. While vain babblings suggest those that are empty and fundamentally worthless in their power to redeem or impart truth. If tomorrow is judgment day, say, Mommy. and I'm standing on the front line, and the Lord asks me what I did with my life, I will say, I spent it with you. In direct contrast to these two cancers, God prescribes the only antidote. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The bottom line for us in all of this is to understand that there are two distinct worlds that compete for our allegiance, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the fallen world. As we've already seen, there's a type of spiritual gravity, the force of rebellion and self-will we call sin, that naturally pulls us deeper into the pit of the world, our flesh, and the devil. And then by the machinations of philosophy and empty deceit, profane and vain babblings, and the lust of the flesh, eyes, and pride of life, we're progressively blinded, hardened, and deceived as to the true nature of this pit, and oblivious to the glorious kingdom that shimmers just over the horizon. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. The solution? The only way out of this black hole? Well, that God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And finally, there's the excuse that perhaps best personifies the very you know, essence of rock and roll. You know, it's not like we're going out and worshiping the devil or anything. You know, music yeah, so is just so music. We, we ought to be able to do what you want to do. I mean, so what if they are Satanists? It's a free country. We have the freedom of religion, okay? That's like in the amendment somewhere or something like that. And, and we're, not, we're not believing every word that these bands are talking about. We just like the music for what it is. And We're not you bad know? people, you know. It's like I come from a very good home, you know. My dad's a pastor. I mean, you know. Life is about partying, right? Having fun. Well, outside the fringe world of black and death metal, and the occasional occult devotee, 
No one ever thinks they're worshiping the devil. I'm not the Antichrist the and that includes artists who have dabbled with, studied, and even embraced the occult. I'm not a Satanist. I'm not, I don't de worship the devil. We reached the devil at his home in Las Vegas. When asked for a comment, Satan said, no, he's not my boy, but I love him like a son. Just for the record, Glenn Danzig does not, according to his publicist, worship the devil. I'm a demon! Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page echoed these disavowals when he stated, I do not worship the devil, but magic does intrigue me. What about these denials? If all these people mean well and are just following their own spiritual path, or as in the case of many heavy metal artists, simply living up to the dark, occultic persona that's expected of them. They and their fans can't be considered followers of Satan, can they? Well, listen carefully, because everything we've examined in this series has been leading up to this very point. The reason so many people reject the charge of Satan worship is because, as we saw earlier, they have a caricature of the devil and his religion in their minds. He's the horn-headed demon in red pajamas, and serving him, should he even exist, would involve sacrificing babies, drinking blood, or something else equally horrible or bizarre. In reality, though, following Satan is far more mundane and universal than most people realize or would care to admit. But I can do anything that I want to. I can pursue any kind of lustful desires that I might feel. I can uh, engage in any activities that are so-called sinful activities and not really worry about any ecumenical councils making it right for me to do these things. Living for, as I've said, all of the earthly and carnal pleasures. A satanic world is a world reborn in purity, a world where uh, the instinct and the intellect will be complementary to one another rather than uh, being at odds with one another. It will be a world in which uh, we follow laws of nature instead of just the rules that man's made up to regulate his conduct. All right, we got one rule. There are no rules. Have a good time. Do what we want. If a Christian said to you, you were just really worshiping yourself, what would you say? In a sense, they would be right. Uh, it is a form of self-worship. We feel that there is no reason why these people shouldn't just flip the coin completely over and simply call themselves what religion has called them for many, many years. Call them devil worshippers or disciples of evil or Satanists. Of course, it's very hard for a person to hang an uncomplimentary label on themselves. And for this reason, for many years, there will be people practicing Satanism as good Christians or other religions, and uh, they will in, in, instinctively pursue the very same things that we are, as they always have. As we've already seen, Satan is an invisible spirit and a master of disguise. His ability to pass himself off as an angel of light can fool the rebellious and the spiritually naive into thinking that black is white truth a lie, and even that God himself is the one telling them these things. And as for following the devil, many that espouse an openly satanic worldview can tell you that it's nothing like the Hollywood caricature. And that's precisely what makes it so disturbing, as the occult magazine Gnosis acknowledged. If there's anything horrifying in its teachings, it's that these are the principles by which most people live most of the time, usually without admitting it even to themselves. And just what is this core principle by which most people live? Well, in a nutshell, do what you want. Surprised? Well, Anton LaVey wasn't. He understood precisely from where this popular concept had arisen. And he must, uh, as a Satanist, knowing this, realizing what his human potential is, eventually, and here is one of the essential points of Satanism, attain 
his own Godhead in accordance with his own potential. Therefore, each man, each woman, is a god or goddess in Satanism. Big Pimper really, man, is living life to your fullest potential. I mean, like, whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, you do it, but in the grandest way possible, you know? And for a god or goddess, what's the ultimate standard for ethics, meaning, purpose, and destiny? You've got it. Whatever you feel is right. My heart is the ruler of all my being. If my heart tells me it's true, that's good enough for me. The answers to your, to your problems are in yourself and not in a, not in a god or a religion. Marilyn Manson noted the universality of the satanic ethic when he observed, the idea of antichrist is an unspoken knowledge that every person has. It's just the acceptance of yourself as a powerful being who can make their own decisions. It's not someone with a 666 on their head. And Satanism is about worshiping yourself because you are responsible for your own good and evil. How would you define, what would you define being a Satanist as? Worship of themselves. You're worshiping yourself when you worship Satan. Aleister Crowley stated it this way in his infamous Book of the Law. Every man and every woman is a star or a god. And as we saw earlier, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Uh, I'm a, basically a free thinker. Whatever anybody wants to do, they can do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt other people. I live by myself, you know, I live by my own values and all that, morals. I set my own ways. How do you determine what those morals and values are? Well, I, don't know, I just do what's right for myself. By declaring that each person should walk in their own light, discover and then do their true will, LaVey, Manson, and Crowley, along with Nietzsche and others, have simply been echoing the father of all lies, the one that goes back to the very dawn of human history. Then the serpent said to the woman, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Satanism then, in its essence, is simply each person looking through his or her own eyes for meaning and direction. As our own god or goddess, we're free to do as we will. Theologically, this worldview can be reduced to a single precept found in the fourth chapter of the Book of Satan. Say unto thine own heart, I am mine own Redeemer. Or. To put it in more common terms, the, quote, triumphant strains, end quote, of a song that LaVey and his disciples viewed as one of the most satanic of the 20th century. I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself. It's no mere coincidence that this song, in its successive incarnations, revealed artists who became living metaphors for the inevitable downward spiral of any culture that embraces I did it my way theology. I did it my way, indeed. Of course, not every follower of the satanic law ends up dying, as did Elvis and Sid, of a drug overdose. Hell does have its trophies on this side of the grave. But the ultimate expression of sin's wages for everyone who, quote, does it their way,
and that includes some of the most talented and beautiful among us, is a grace-forsaken darkness that waits just on the other side of death. And while Elvis and Sid may represent the figurative alpha and omega of the rock milieu, this my way ethic has expressed itself in so many ways by so many different performers. And I want to do it my, you know, my way, to sound like Frank Sinatra. And in so many songs, interviews, and concert performances, one could easily argue that Do What Thou Wilt defines the very soul of rock and roll. Once a kid can click this switch in his head and say, I can do what I want to do, I'm here on this earth, there are laws, but I'm going to handle it my way, gains identity. The bitch with a flashlight. Do anything you want to do. Do what you want. Do it, boy. Do what you want to do. You can do what you want to do. 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 Do what thou wilt often resonates in the words of the popular mantra, do your own and, thing. And the thing is, whatever is good for you is the best for you, you know. It's a simple thing, but people don't understand that. Doing your own thing means doing your own thing, not right. doing exactly what everybody <laughs> else is doing, but doing what suits you. Let me hear you say it's my thing. I do what I want to do. I want to die. I want to die. It can provide the foundation for the ever popular believe or trust in yourself. When I say be a soldier, I mean being true to the game, being true to yourself and believing yourself. The truth is all within and the satanic law can find its most perfect and enticing expression in what has become one of our culture's most popular credos, follow or trust your heart. Trust your heart, let faith decide to guide these lives we see. Why second guess what feels so right? Just trust your heart and you'll see the light. To the heart, you must be to the heart. to 
From acceptance speeches to follow our heart to Broadway musicals. Follow my heart, but to where? To wherever your heart tells you to go. To children's videos. When you follow your heart. This flake of feel good wisdom has become the great law, the only politically correct commandment for a culture wherein truth is relative. Truth is whatever you believe is right. Man is good, and God is whatever you want him, her, or it to be. Truth is, there are no absolute truths. I mean, even God doesn't work that way. But think for just a moment. Aren't most or even all the things that people say and do determined ultimately by the desires of their hearts? We're bored with the concept of right and wrong. Without some absolute standard of right and wrong, what's to keep a cute children's song? from becoming the score for man's descent into lust, murder, and anarchy. When there's people in your life trying to tell you what is right, what do you do? Listen to your heart, girl. Do you take a brand new road or the one you've always known? Am I getting through? Listen to your heart, girl. Listen to your heart, girl. Listen to your heart, girl. Cause the heart's not gonna lie to you. Listen to your heart, I can do anything I want to you people at any time I want to. You got to listen, listen to your heart. As we saw earlier in this series, the reason this do what you want, it's your thing, follow your heart theology is wrong and ultimately even satanic is because our hearts and minds have been profoundly deranged by the effects of sin. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And perhaps most direct of all, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. From mankind's fall from grace, to virtually every evil ideology that has blighted this travailing planet, ignoring our Creator's commands and doing instead what seems right in our own eyes and hearts, has been the fountain from which sin and its wages have flowed. Of course, that's not to say that following one's heart will always produce the wrong or the most evil consequence. The Bible makes it clear that all of us have a dim memory of Paradise Lost and the moral standards we were created to obey. Depending on the individual and the culture, listening to one's heart can at times produce an approximately correct decision. And of course, for someone who's been born again through and to the will of God, following one's now regenerated heart can provide genuine direction and courage. But for the rebel, for those walking in their own counsel and by their own light, following your heart is a perfect expression of the satanic law and a one-way ticket to hell. Let's now close by examining the law from the satanic Bible that best expresses the essence of this do-what-thou-wilt philosophy, saying to thine own heart, I am mine own redeemer. One of the essential facts of life is that we're all born with a sense that something is wrong or missing, and the rest of life becomes a quest for wholeness and fulfillment. In theological terms, redemption. Whatever we look to for this, be it God, family, friends, lovers, money, power, sex, drugs, music, fame, or anything else, that person or thing becomes our Redeemer, by definition, our God. Christianity simply declares that all of us have been ruined by sin and, as a result, are completely unable to save ourselves. We need a Messiah, a supernatural Redeemer, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Against this, every other religion, every philosophy and ethical system contrived by man says in one way or another that we're not really that bad and that through our own efforts we can redeem ourselves. In this they share the bottom line of Satanism and most of rock and roll. And now, the ultimate dichotomy, the final fork in the road, presents itself. On the one hand stands the cross and the broken body of God the Son. And on the other, an idol, gilded by the craft of man. And just as in Moses' time, today the people riot and dance about their idol, and the music of their worship rises up to heaven as the sounds of war. Only those who are willingly blind can deny what this series has established that at every point, with an almost mathematical precision, the culture of rock and roll seeks to subvert the rightful rule of God and put man, and sometimes even Satan, in his place. From its deep roots in the occult to the vast profusion of evil fruit, the stain of sin, death, and judgment are unmistakable for those who have eyes to see. Know now that one day the music will stop. For those still worshiping around the golden calf, by God's grace, may that time be now. Come to the end and our moment of truth. 
a truth that obviously goes a lot deeper than just deciding what bands and songs you're going to listen to. All that flows from a much deeper place, the foundation of who your God is, who owns and is running your life. The fork in the road that's before us in this moment in time should be radically clear. My will or thy will. The religion of man and doing what I think is best or the religion of God and accepting what he has done for us on the cross. If the Holy Spirit has opened your eyes and heart to see this fork in the road and you now recognize that you've been on the wrong side, well, by God's grace, it's time to switch sides. When Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel, that's what repent means. Change your mind, turn from your sins, switch sides. The gospel begins with a simple declaration of fact. All of us are like sheep who have turned away. Each of us has gone on our own path. We're sinners and the wages of sin is death. The good news is that the Lord placed the power and penalty of sin on Jesus through the cross. He was crucified for our offenses, the Bible says, and then resurrected for our justification to present us redeemed before the throne of God. If by God's grace the lights are now on and you believe that and want to be a child, a friend, and follower of God, all you need do is call on the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I come before your throne of grace in and through the name of your Son, Jesus. I want to tell you how sorry I am for my rebellion and sin. In my thoughts and words, in the things I've done and left undone, I have broken your righteous commandments. I'm sorry, and by your grace purpose to turn from the path I've been on, to turn from all my sins, and instead love and follow you with all my heart, soul, and strength. I thank you for loving me while I was yet a sinner and sending Jesus to save me. According to your word, I believe and confess that he was crucified for my sins, raised from the dead for my salvation, and glorified at your right hand so that one day I can worship you in heaven. I boldly and fervently declare that Jesus is now the Lord and Savior of my life. Take all that I am and ever will be and use it for your glory. So be it. Amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now a child of God and embarked on the most incredible adventure imaginable, a journey to a holy city, a kingdom, whose builder and architect is God. There's a blueprint for the way the Lord builds. Stick around for just a few more minutes and we're going to give you nine keys for making sure that the structure of your own life and destiny will stand before the tests of life. In closing, let me say something to those who are not ready to repent. Three quick suggestions that helped me as a rock and roll rebel and a confirmed skeptic when it came to things like Christianity. First, Pray and be honest with God. Tell Him that you have real doubts, problems, whatever, but that if He is real and Jesus is the Messiah, you want to know it. Now, here's the rub. You also have to be willing to obey the truth once it's revealed to you. Second, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Read from the bestseller of all time. I would suggest starting with the Gospel of Luke. And again, Pray and ask God to reveal truth to you as you read. And finally, one of the primary contentions of this video series is that people are being brainwashed by today's popular entertainments. If you really want to know the truth, turn off or at least turn down the brainwashing hose for a month or so. Like getting off of junk food, you'll be amazed at how different you'll feel. If you do these three things, your cynicism may very well turn to salvation. May God's face shine upon you. Hi, 
My name is Bruce, and God set me free from hardcore Satanism and a devotion to occult philosophy. I want to encourage you to dive into the Word of God, to, as the Bible says, renew your mind and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. As this video series is made clear, there's a lot of brainwashing going on in this world. If you are going to grow in your faith, you need not only to shut off the sewer line of pop culture, you also need God to flush out the sewage with the living waters of His truth. As Jesus prayed concerning His disciples, Sanctify them, Lord, or make them holy in Thy truth. Thy word is truth. Become a student of God's word, and the truth will set you free. Hi, my name is Kelsey and Jesus Christ completely delivered me from what I thought was a hopeless addiction to crack cocaine. Now you've just seen in this video series how powerful music can be. Well, whatever evil flows through bad music, a far greater good is manifested through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. Become a worshiper. Listen to music that, as Bach said, gives glory to God. And take time daily, if possible, to lift up your heart in song to the Lord. He who sings to God, the early church said, prays twice. Hi, my name is Joy, and I was blessed to grow up in a strong Christian home and come to know the Lord at a very young age. I want to encourage you to spend time with God in prayer. When Jesus taught His disciples to pray, the first thing He said was, Our Father. As born-again Christians, we have a Father who loves us infinitely more than any human father ever could. Can you imagine a good father who doesn't love to spend time with his kids? Well, God wants to spend time with you, to love on you, to help you, to change you more and more into His image. And prayer, along with worship and the Word, is the best way that you can do this. And on top of this, prayer is the most powerful way that we can work with God to change the world. Hi, my name is Louie, and Jesus freed me from a 10-year drug habit my sophomore year in college. I want to challenge you to watch over your soul. God's command is to come out from among them, the pagan world, and touch nothing unclean, to set our affections on things above, not on things of the earth, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to expose them. And here's the radical verse for you, to hate the work of those who fall away. There are hundreds of similar verses in the Bible, all telling us the same thing, that as believers we are not to, on a personal level, take in anything that is offensive to God. Of course, that doesn't mean that we're to retreat in the impotent little subcultures. Rather, we're called to transform our world as ambassadors of His kingdom. To be like Jesus, a friend of sinners, in order to lead them back to God. But on a personal level, for example, in the area of our leisure time and the entertainments that we enjoy, we simply cannot compromise by fellowshipping with darkness. There's a poem I've learned that pretty much says everything in regard to this key area of Christian discipleship. There are two natures that beat within my breast. One is foul and the other blessed. One I love and one I hate, but the one I feed will dominate. Feed and care for your soul. It's the only one you've got and its condition will determine your reward in eternity. Hi, my name is Gabriella, and the Lord delivered me from a prison of sexual abuse and rape a sin that has victimized women in my family for generations. I want to challenge you to be radical in your service for God. You know the old saying, the best defense is a good offense? Well, after Jesus rose from the dead, having conquered sin and Satan, and being crowned the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, He commissioned His disciples, and that includes you, to go. Christianity is not about getting saved and then twiddling your spiritual thumbs while waiting for the rapture. Every Christian has a part to play in fulfilling the Great Commission. Find out what yours is, and then throw yourself into it with all your heart, mind, and strength. Don't settle for an average life. Lose your life for His sake, and then you will find one that will shine forever. Hello, my name is Chris, and God delivered me from an aimless life of drinking, partying, and drug abuse. If you're a child of God, you are now part of a huge extended family that reaches around the world well, family life is meant to be shared. 
If you're a new Christian, find a good church that can be your immediate family and then really get involved. And by a good church, I mean a congregation where the people are really excited about God, not just going through the motions. Where the Bible is honored as the true and inerrant Word of God. Where there is discipleship, God-honoring worship, and a real commitment to fulfilling the Great Commission. Join the team and get with the program. Hello, my name is Mike, and Christ set me free from the lie of doing my own thing and thinking I was saved because I went to church and loved gospel music. I want to encourage you to be a living, breathing ambassador for Jesus and His kingdom. To this end, while what we say is important, the way we live our lives is the real bottom line. Like St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times, and if need be, use words. By His grace, strive to live a life of integrity, honesty, love, and service. And one more thing in this regard, don't be afraid to be different from the world around you. God has called us to be a peculiar people in the same sense that the fish swimming up the river seems peculiar to those that just go with the flow. So I also want to encourage you, don't allow the fallen world system to brainwash you and press you into its mold and strive to bring every thought captive in obedience to Christ. From education, dating, marriage, finances, fashion, politics, entertainment, you name it, we need to be leaders, living examples of a transformed life. Hello, my name is Julie, and Jesus saved me out of the darkness of idolatry and false religion. I want to encourage you to become a reader. It's no accident that Jesus was the Word made flesh and that reading and writing have always been central to the Judeo-Christian experience. Believers need to be able to give an answer to every man to defend the faith and provide real solutions to the world's questions and needs. A great place to start as a reader is with the writings of C.S. Lewis and Francis Schaeffer. From poetry to prose, philosophy to apologetics, we need to recover the lost tools of learning and raise again the standard of Christian scholarship. And don't be intimidated by the classics of literature and theology. If you chew strong meat long enough, your jaws will toughen up. Remember this, readers are leaders and TV watchers are bottom feeders. Hello, my name is Eric and God set me free from a world of sex, drugs and rock and roll. I want to encourage you to, well, be encouraged. If you read chapter 15 of Genesis, along with several other passages in the Bible, you'll see that God grants His people victory when, one, they repented of their sins and reestablished their covenant with Him, and two, the sins of the culture that's about to be won by God has reached a kind of saturation point. Well, perhaps that time is now. Perhaps the Amorite's cup of iniquity, so to speak, is full. Revival and judgment are in the air. It's time to rise up, put on the spiritual armor of God, and go. There's a culture and a world to be one. Holy, holy, you've lifted the veil. Glory. My tongue can never tell
my spirit.